We got Crunchyroll voice actor drama going on today. Check this out from Bounding in the Comics. Western voice actors accuse Crunchyroll of bigotry for casting white actress as Saleta, an English dub of Mobile Suit Gundam The Witch from Mercury. They say in current year it has become a taboo of the highest order among the West to have a voice actor play a character outside of their own race, gender, and sexuality, even if such qualities only apply to said character within one's own headcanon. <laughs> okay. As proven for the umpteenth time by the recent outrage surrounding the English dub casting for Mobile Suit Gundam The Witch from Mercury. Well, we know that's not entirely true. Not to be like, oh, I'm correcting Bounding in the Comics, just from what I've seen. Um, this only goes a certain direction. For example, it's apparently fine to have non-Japanese people playing Japanese characters. We've seen voice actors defend that a lot. Because if they really did stand behind the claim that only a character can be played by a person of the same race, gender, sexuality, etc., the same sort of stuff, then that would mean, you know, we can only cast Japanese, uh, English-speaking Japanese people to dub Japanese characters, which this might surprise some people, but a lot of anime characters are Japanese. I know, shocker, right? I'm being facetious. And actually, you may remember, two months ago, we saw that exact situation play out with the voice actor Jameson Price, who was the voice actor for Chad in Bleach. Well, with Thousand Year Blood War returning, this was again two months ago, he said he was no longer going to be voicing Chad. He stepped down to allow a person of color to take the role of Chad. If you don't know, Chad is a Mexican-Japanese character. Now, I actually don't have an issue with these voice actors stepping down. You know, if they want to give up a role, that's fine. They're more than welcome to, and if that's their reason, that's fine go for it. The thing I have an issue with is the hypocrisy. The fact that a lot of these people don't actually care about people of color, they just care about publicity and optics. Point being, that one Easy Gintama fanboy and many other people said, guess you better stop voicing Japanese characters then. To which Jameson Price eventually addressed because so many people were making the similar take, and he said this, for those who argue that by my logic I should not voice any Japanese characters, Anime is Japanese. The characters are mostly Japanese. The characters in Korean animation are mostly Korean. In French animation, mostly French. And so on. The nationality is the setting. We are interpreting that setting for a Western English-speaking audience. So voicing a Japanese or Korean or French character is not necessarily an issue. It is the voice acting after all. But where it is an issue for me is when a character self-identifies in a specific way, dark-skinned, non-binary, black, Hispanic, or Japanese, etc., or is specified in a way that makes the character trait more important than others, then I feel a representative actor can bring more to the role. But it's not just about representation, it's also about access. When I started dubbing those many years ago, it wasn't popular or mainstream. Fewer actors wanted to do it, fewer actors of a diversity were in the acting pool, and many who were didn't have access. That's all changing. I will continue to audition for roles I feel are appropriate for me, with careful thought as to whether I am encouraging diversity or hindering access for my fellow actors. Do the best you can until you know better, and when you know better, do better. Maya Angelo. Well, a lot of people did not like that response. The majority of the comments actually are negative. To me, he comes off like a white savior, the sort of person that really wants to make it seem like they care about black people or people that are not white, but in reality, they really only care about themselves and they care about the optics of trying to seem virtuous. Yeah, very convenient that he can retain 99% of his roles you know, oh, uh, I can still voice Japanese characters, that's fine, but I'm going to look all virtuous giving up this one role for Chad. Which, by the way, I don't think Chad has many lines at all in Thousand Year Blood War, so he's really not giving up much. If he truly stood by what he originally said, he really should agree with the people saying he should also not voice Japanese or Asian characters, instead of responding with a convoluted answer. Particularly because if he wants to virtue signal, we can also talk about how hate crimes against Asians have risen tremendously in the United States. Some states like part of California even have reports that claim hate crimes against Asians have spiked over 200%. So it seems like a great opportunity for white voice actors like Jameson to give up more roles for Asian VAs. Now obviously that's not entirely correlated, but hey, he's willing to give up roles, so why not also help the Asian community as well, if that's his take? But yeah, we know why he won't do that. Now, let's get back to the current news. However, if you are enjoying this segment so far, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. It really does help out, and I appreciate it. Taken to Twitter February 1st, just a couple of days ago, Crunchyroll announced that thanks to the work of their in-house production studio, the former heroine would be portrayed by Jill Harris, Charlotte Pudding in One Piece, and the latter by Natalie Van Sistine, your forger in Spy Family. You can see the official announcement right here, and the voice actress is announced. And as mentioned, that's when things took a turn for the worst. Well, let me clarify. There were first a lot of people very happy about this announcement, especially happy about Yor and uh, Charlie from Hasman Hotel. Those are some of the fan favorites that people are mentioning regarding these voice actresses. Now continuing. 
Thanks to her darker complexion and the now infamous marriage proposal scene between her and Meereen in the series' first episode, identity politics-focused Witch from Mercury fans have come to believe that Saleta is coded. For example, when overt stereotypes are used to portray a character's identity rather than it being confirmed by the author as both Middle Eastern slash North African and queer. However, it should be noted that these personal reads are just that, as the series has shown Saleta to be neither. Rather, her dark skin is the result of being raised on Mercury in close proximity to the sun. An aforementioned moment between her and Murine is actually a matter of the latter, rejecting her arranged marriage. So that is the explanation that Bounding in the Comics provides. Now, I don't think they lie about that, but just for clarity, I haven't watched this, so I can't confirm or deny if that's the context, but that's what they claim is the context. Continuing on. Actually, I'll mention one more thing. If you do want to see a show with a great WLW pairing, check out Ga Ray Zero. Great couple, although very depressing and dark show, so be warned in advance. The article goes on to show a series of tweets from the voice actor Nazi H. Tarsha, where he makes some vague complaints. We're going to actually skip down, though. I'd like to start with this tweet from Anaris. Uh, I don't want to mispronounce her last name. My apologies. I I'm not going to try. I'm sure I'll say it wrong, but... Anaris is the voice actress for Mirko, and I think she does a wonderful job as Mirko, like, phenomenal job. So it's kind of sad seeing this tweet. She said, Pretty lame that Crunchyroll's strong preference for local talent affects authentic representation in a major role, casting a wide pool for the biggest anime show of the year and not a mena queer lead in the major franchise says a lot. There's even an archive of her tweets. Now, I've actually got to apologize again. I think I even mispronounced her first name. Is it Anaris? So, <laughs> hey, I'm trying. But... It turns out she apparently like deleted her entire Twitter account sometime after making these tweets, at least seven hours after. So I don't really know what's going on with that. Now, as mentioned, we've also got some tweets from this Nazi H. Tarsha guy. And before I read this out loud, let me just give you my opinion on this sort of thing. So I think it's kind of wrong. I don't think it's a great personal decision to come out with tweets that are negative towards a fellow voice actress securing a role. Now, as Bounding in the Comics even mentioned, perhaps the demographics of that role is even questionable to the claims that people are trying to project onto it. But that aside, I'm not even going to use that talking point. I just think it's pretty wrong on a personal level to show such negativity towards a fellow voice actor, especially because the tweets that these people are making are getting hundreds of thousands of views. They are riling up groups of people and they know very well that if they get enough backlash in this situation excuse me if they direct enough backlash in this situation towards the innocent va who really did nothing wrong at least from what i saw she just got the role that should be they should be celebrating her and happy for her not making tweets that like i was getting at can direct a lot of negative attention towards that person that crunchyroll might see and in a potential worst case scenario again this va who for all intents and purposes, from what I saw, did nothing wrong, is completely innocent, and the actions taken by these other voice actors might actually end up getting this person recast, causing them financial hardship, and I don't need to go on about why getting recast and losing a role can potentially be difficult, especially in the economy that we're at right now. I'll even make this more personal with an example that I think is a great example. <laughs> so... I've got a particular interest in crime, especially like organized crime, and that's because of certain things that I actually did as a teenager, uh, and, and even going back to like being freaking two years old, man. I started out young, doing some stuff that I had to do to get by, and I'm just going to leave it at that. And um, the people like these voice actors that are making these negative tweets, to me, it's the exact sort of people that like if they got pinched, if they did some illegal stuff with a group of friends, they'd be the first people like crying to the officers and the judge saying that they'll gladly rat their friends out for an easier sentence. To me, same sort of people, man. You're willing to drag this VA who's innocent, potentially getting a recast, probably the same sort of person that would rat out your friends for personal gain. It's pathetic. So Nazi H. Tarsha says, It pains me to write this on a day that should be filled with nothing but celebration and admiration toward my peers, to feel as though there is a corporate flyer with a risk assessment eval stating how much one can get away with before receiving an inordinate amount of backlash. We can sit here and argue the merits of right for the role versus auto-cast because of ethnicity, but let's also not pretend that the quality provided by minority actors is less than the quality of their peers. Inclusion gives us the ability to tell the stories of our backgrounds, even if it is a cookie-cutter project where race ultimately could be neglected, character coding still exists, therefore bringing forth racial relatability to minority consumers. Unfortunately, the more obscure the minority, the easier it is to sweep under the rug. Sad but true. 
I have a duty to my peers to use my platform to speak for those whose voices go unheard. May there come a day where the ambiguous nature of remote recording allowances is foregone and the opportunities are provided to actors and directors alike to make the best possible products. Now, while the tweet did get a couple thousand likes, there is actually a lot of people giving pushback to that take as well. I'll give you a couple examples of those responses in a brief compilation. All right, so I've pretty much said my piece on this topic already. I'll close with this. I'm totally fine with more non-white people getting more English VA roles. What I don't like is the hypocrisy from so many of these English voice actors, where they try to make some virtue signal take for optics, but clearly care more about their personal gain from doing so than the alleged underlying issue. As I said to me, these are the same sort of people who would rat their own friends out in a heartbeat for personal gain. There's not much else I need to say about people like that, so I'll leave it here. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. I look forward to catching you in the comments and in the next segment.